at Rochester 4, Highway 52 North, or Rochester Toyota, Highway 63 South. A whole lot of sunshine here for us on this Thursday from start to finish and we'll have clear sky overnight. It was a cold start to the day. Temperatures in the upper 30s, but there were some patches of frost to start the day. We will not have that frost here as we make our way into our Friday morning. That's live from the Sukla from Skycam in downtown Rochester. Here is a look at the lows this morning. Rochester. 37 degrees the low, but in low-lying areas, as I mentioned yesterday, we'd have some frost, and we did have a little bit of frost throughout parts of southeast Minnesota. Not a killing freeze, as you can see, our temperatures above the freezing mark this morning for just about everybody. Highs this afternoon, though, nice. Upper 60s in Rochester and Dodge Center. 63 the high in Preston and 64 in Decorah and in Charles City. So a beautifully warm day today. Current readings are still in the upper 60s to lower 70s throughout the area. So warm this evening, turning cool tonight. But warmer just out to our west, 70s and 80s as you get into the Dakotas, and we will start to taste those upper 70s here as we make our way into the weekend. For now, though, clear sky. Not much happening anywhere close to home. Clouds starting to build a little bit in northern Minnesota and southern Canada. We have another round of colder air starting to make its way into southern Canada as we make our way to the end of the week, but not here at home. Not quite yet. High pressure building into northern Illinois by tomorrow morning, and our winds starting to pick up out of the south during the day tomorrow, and that southerly wind still fairly dry for us tomorrow, but the wind picking up and our highs making their way into the upper 70s starting tomorrow, and a cold front just starting to nose out of Manitoba into northern Minnesota by the uh, morning hours on Saturday. So as we get into Saturday, still warm, highs close to 80 by Saturday afternoon, and a mild start to the day. This front will continue southward as we get into Saturday night, and thunderstorms will start to develop around northern Wisconsin, the Twin Cities, and down to Marshall, Minnesota by Saturday afternoon. Saturday evening, those storms will continue to roll our way. So while we have a big cold front straddling the upper Midwest and coming our way, it will not make a huge difference as far as our temperatures go, making our way to the end of the weekend, but a good opportunity for rain along that front. Highs tomorrow with sunshine will be in the mid to upper 70s. A nice warm day tomorrow. Seasonably cool tonight, typically cool, 44 degrees the low. There will be frost in parts of Illinois and southern Wisconsin tonight, but not expecting that here at home. The winds 15 to 25 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon. So the wind will start to pick up and our highs will be in the upper 70s tomorrow. And same goes for Saturday, actually a little warmer Saturday than tomorrow. And thunderstorms are possible late Saturday into Sunday. As we make our way to next week, it looks like the best chance in the next seven days for any of that rain is going to be Tuesday. Could see some heavy rain through parts of southern Minnesota and North Iowa, and then we'll be in the 60s behind the front that will be responsible for that rain. So good news. It has been a very dry May, very mm -hmm. dry April so far. We've got showers in the forecast, and we'll see how it goes. Much needed. Need Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. You bet. Well, on a beautiful night like this, Pat Lund has to be somewhere special. Doing something you would think is sports-related. Yeah, I asked if I could go golfing today, but the new boss said, no way, Lund, you got to go cover some softball. So I'm out at RCTC, the National Championships in Women's Softball is right here. We'll talk about the tournament and twins coming up next in sports. News Center Weather, sponsored by Lewiston Auto. Good evening and welcome to the RCTC Softball Complex, the site of this year's Junior College National Championships in Women's Softball. We'll get to the tournament here in a bit, but boy, the Twins are really struggling and they wrapped up their three-game set in Cleveland with a loss, so the Tribe comes out with a sweep and it was a pitcher's duel, scoreless game into the seventh inning. That's when the Indians got to Johan Santana. Victor Martinez puts the first run on the board with just jack to left field, one nothing Tribe. Just a couple of pitches later, I mean just a couple of pitches later, Cleveland takes Santana deep again. This time it's Ryan Garko, back-to-back -back homers in a three-pitch span, and that was all the scoring in the game, as the Indians are now 5-0 and this season versus the American League Central, and the Twins have lost seven of their last eight, 12 of their last 16. The record dips four games under the 500 mark. They'll be in Milwaukee to face the Brewers over the weekend. All right, now we're going to talk some tournament softball. Shelly Beecher joins us. She is the tournament director for the uh, National Championships in Community College Softball. Second year in Rochester as a tournament director. How much easier is it to get things going in a second year after being through it uh, one year already? You know, after the first year, um, it is a lot easier. I remember preparing last year, and we we're all in a panic of last minute things that we had to get done. And this year, Wednesday, preparing, it kind of all came together, you know, like it should have been. And it was much easier the second time around. 
the Rochester Amateur Sports Commission and RCTC do a great job combined getting tournaments together. Obviously, you hear wonderful things from the fans and players, don't you? Absolutely, yep. And, of course, the weather helps tremendously to keep everybody happy. Um, yeah, a lot of teams um, have their parents and fans coming out with them, and that's great for travel. That's great um, all around for the city of Rochester. Four teams are back from last year's national championships. The defending champs are back. Eight teams in the field. How did day one go? Were there any surprises in the field? Um, not so much. Uh, maybe a little bit. A uh, little close games. Um, a few, actually, a few close games that came down right to the wire. Um, makes the tournament really exciting. And day one was a great start. One team has just two victories coming into this. How the heck does that happen where a team wins two games all year and they get into this tournament? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't heard much. Um, that's Columbus State yeah. out of Columbus, Ohio. I haven't heard much about how they qualified to get here, but you know, usually <laughs> they have to win their region yeah. to qualify for national tournaments. So, you know, if they got those last two wins at na at regions, you know, they're here. So that's all that matters is that when is. you get those two wins in regionals, you can go out, you can not win a game all year and get there. Absolutely, they had a tight game at the end here. They almost pulled out a victory, but you know, that's that's what happens in nationals. You never know. All right, Shelly Beecher, the tournament director. Thank you very much for joining us. That's the story out here. There were eight games, four eight games played out here today. A bunch of games tomorrow. The championship Saturday afternoon at four. That'll do it here from the RCTC uh, softball complex. We'll be back after these uh, messages. Newton out of 10, they are responsible for producing some of the area's biggest wind farms. Now its employees are getting some devastating news. Also, we are going gluten-free, or at least telling you where you can go if your diet requires you to remove the protein from your menu. There are also more than 20 restaurants that cater to you, and tonight out of 10, we'll find out which ones those are. And she makes a living picking up what no one else wants to. At 10, we'll tell you how one woman is overcoming illness and making a living at it. These stories tonight at 10 o'clock. Thank you for watching us tonight at 6. Have a great night. We'll see you at 10. Welcome to the Minnesota State Lottery's Daily 3 and North Star Cash Drawings for Thursday, May 17, 2007. Tonight's drawings are being audited by the accounting firm of Schechter, Dock & Cantor. Proceeds from the lottery benefit Minnesota's natural and economic environments. Now it's time to select tonight's daily three numbers. The first daily three number is six. The second number is nine. And the third number is six. Saturday's Hot Lotto Jackpot is an estimated $8.8 .8 million. Tonight's winning North Star cash numbers are 3, 29, 17, 7, 1. Again, here are tonight's winning numbers. Numbers are not official until validated and certified. Ask your lottery retailer for details about the newest online game from the Minnesota State Lottery.